your girl Renee and I am here today to show you step by step how I am going to do my winter sewing this year. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Joanne McMillan because when I did my original winter sewing and she heard that I was having an issue with trying to keep my labels from getting all bleached out and not being able to recognize what I had planted in my containers. Well, she was nice enough to suggest getting some Sharpie paint pens. So I went on Amazon and I purchased these paint pens and this is what they look like. This is the black one. And it says on here that it's supposed to be um, non, um, it says heavy overcasting, multiple colors won't fade. So that's my main problem. I didn't want my, um, my labels to fade out. So this is what the pen looks like. And at first when you open it, this part, this black tip is like clear and then you have to shake it. And then as you press down on the point, I use like a piece of um, paper towel and I pressed, pressed, pressed on it until the paint started to come to the tip of the uh, marker. And then I started to write. So this is, and they're pretty good because look how um, nicely it was able to write on this um, little little sticker tab right here, my plant stab. So I was so excited about that. So remember I said that I was gonna do um, experiment with writing um, on my little plant tag and then I was gonna put some tape on it. Well, I have chosen to put some of the tapes on some of my labels. So we're gonna try, this is gonna be an experiment. We're gonna have some that's gonna have the tape on it some I'm going to use this paint pen and I have done that on these plant tags and I've also done it on these craft sticks. So we gonna see which one works out for Miss Renee in her winter sewing this winter. So that's the one thing I wanted to make clear to give the shout out to Miss Joanne. Thank you Joanne for that little tip. I'm so thankful and I think I only paid maybe like $13 for this set of 12 and they come in all kind of um, different colors as you can see. See all the different colors? So fingers crossed that it works. Okay the next thing that I did was I had to choose what I was going to be winter sewing this winter. So I went with, I was going to do some herbs so I decided to do some chives and I wanted to do some parsley and onions. That's not really a herb, but I threw it in there. And I wanted to do um, some basil and um, a few other herbs. So this is the first thing I did. I figured out what herbs I wanted. And then I took my little Sharpie paint pen and I marked what the name of it was. Like this is my basil, so on my stick I wrote um, basil, and then I wrote the date, which was 12-25-21, um, and then I also did the number one. See? So also, when I did all that, I did all my herbs, then I took my handy dandy little notepad, and I said number one was basil. My number two stick was the fenogreek herb and then my third one was uh, mint um, which was lemon mint so this is how i keep everything organized so when if it does happen to fade and i no longer can know what i put on these my labels i can always go back to my notepad and this will keep me organized keep me on track to know exactly what I was planting in those containers. Because I don't know about you guys, but I know I have a hard time keeping up with my stuff once you um, get to planting your seeds and stuff in the dirt. So for my flowers, I decided I was going to do some petunias. And I was going to do some sunflowers. And I was going to do some alyssum, the pink color. 
And then I was going to do some more coleus because the coleus did so well for me. I was very, very impressed. And then um, I'm going to do some zinnias. And then I've never, never, never tried to do these moonflowers. So I'm going to do some uh, moonflowers. And then you know I had such a great turnout with my foxgloves. So I am going to try it again. And I'm going to do some delphiniums. Now I tried delphiniums last winter sowing. And they didn't do so well. So I'm going to try it again because, you know, I'm not a quitter. I'm going to keep on trying until I get my delphiniums. Because if you guys have never grown delphiniums, they are very long. They're very sleek. They're very elegant. And the colors are just so vibrant. And, you know, Miss Renee loves some color in my garden. That's my number one thing. I love me some color. And then I'm going to do some white alyssums because you know how I always do my... um my um gardening boxes um on my deck railing and i thought some white alyssums would be perfect and if i could save some money from having to go to the store and purchase these alyssums then that would save me some money in the long run so that is what miss renee is going to be doing um for her flowers and then i decided that i was going to do um some peppers, which I was going to do some, um, this Lazia pepper that everybody was talking about. You know, Miss Linda um, from New Orleans Gardener, she did these and they were fabulous. So I'm going to try those. And then I've never, never tried these before. Have you guys tried these before? Because they say these are good. Um, you can, um, you could eat the leaves. And um, they're good. They have a very um, strong flavor. And they're good for if you want to um, put them in applesauce, cakes, confections, and liqueur. Hmm. And it says it grows about 18 inches tall with finely serrated leaves. All right. So we're going to try and see. Um, how this works out for Miss Renee. And then, of course, you know, even though I'm overwintering some peppers, and I'll give you an update on my bell peppers in my garage and let you see how they're doing. So, I'm, you know, I can never get enough peppers. And then I thought I would do some more sweet peppers because, you know, I did the lunchbox peppers last um, growing season, and they did phenomenal. And so I did some dehydrating of the um, sweet peppers and the lunchbox peppers. So I definitely want to do more of those so I can keep my um, spices going. And I'm going to try some more butternut squash because um, this was the first time I tried butternut squash. And I really, really, really enjoyed them. So, and I'm going to try Farmer Q, um, little, um, his, um, his cucumber so his white cucumber so i'm excited about that so this is just a little bit of stuff that miss renee is going to be trying to be winter sewing and i will bring you along with me on this wonderful journey and i will be, come back with part two and showing you exactly how i go about mending my dirt putting them in the containers and putting the labels in and um, writing on the container so you can see exactly how I do that as well. All right, so let me get back to doing my labels because I had to go back and buy some more craft sticks. Because, you know, I didn't think I'd ever run out of these little labels, you know, these little plant sticks. But yes, 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 I did. So I had to go and do some searching couldn't find any so i had to go to walmart pick me up some of these and these were like three dollars for um 75 so that's pretty good so that's what i'm gonna do because i still have a few more um things to label like i want to do a whole bunch of parsley and i also want to do some nasturtiums this year and i want to do some of these purple um basil that um Kiki gave me, so I'm really, really excited about that. And she gave me some um, poppy seeds, too. So I'm going to try to grow some of these. I've never done these, so I'm excited about that. So, oh, and I have to make sure that um, I do my sunflowers 
that um, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors sent me. So I'm about to sew them too. So wish me luck and I will see you in part two of Miss Renee's Winter Sewing. All right, guys, take care. This is your girl Renee and I am outside and it is a beautiful day. So this is going to be part two of Miss Renee's winter sewing. So let me start by saying, let me show you everything you're going to need <clears throat> to get your containers prepped and ready. So you're going to need some good scissors. You're going to need a knife to poke holes. You're going to also need, I use this ice pick. Remember this old school ice pick? How many people remember using these? Mm-hmm. I have one of these for holes. I have my tape so I'll be able to seal my container. I have some water to spritz my seeds once I get them in the dirt. And I have some gardening gloves. And I also have my bag of seeds and my labels. This is what I do for each um, section of my um, water, uh, my winter sowing. I put all, like these are all my herb seeds, so I have all my herb seeds, and I also have my labels all ready to go, so I don't have to be fumbling around trying to figure out where my seeds are that I want to plant. I have, I have a bag for my flower seeds, and I have a bag for my vegetables. So today, I am going to be planting up my herbs. Alright, so I wanted to show you exactly how I go about um, getting my um, clear container prepped and ready to go for to receive my wonderful amended soil and my seed. So the first thing you need to do is I'm going to bring you on down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So at the bottom of here, I usually take my ice pick and I punch a hole. I already put a hole, so punch a hole in my container. And then I do it all the way around my container so that it'll have good water drainage. I usually put like four holes in there and then I also make the holes a little bit bigger be careful of using knife most of the time I use a soldering iron so it'll go just easier and, and um, quicker into um, the container so I just make those holes a little bit bigger all right once I get that done then I always poke another hole to where I'm going to cut my container and I put it up a little high and I poke a hole and then I do this so I can get my hole started. Then I take my scissors and I start cutting around the container. I hope you guys can see that. And I keep cutting around the container. You don't want to cut all the way through. I always look to see where I'm at and then I know I need to cut a little bit more until I get the flap that's like this. All right so once I'll bring you up here so you can see so once I get my flap that's like this and I have my holes already put in there now it's time to add the soil. All right, so what I used in my soil is I used some regular um, top soil, some cheap dirt, and then I used some of this Miracle Row seed starting um, dirt. And this dirt already has the fertilizer in it because you got to remember that these seeds are going to be in this container all winter long until spring. So I like to give it the best start possible. So I also add some bone meal in there, and I also added some blood meal in there, and I also added some of these um, worm castings in there. So this is what it all looks like. And I usually put it in a, in a uh, big old container like this. 
See? So all my dirt and stuff is in here. Because I know all winter long they're going to need some nice rich soil to get them a good start and to continue to help them grow until springtime. So I want to try to make the most healthiest plants I can make. All right, so we're going to take our container right here and we are just going to fill it up. Let's see this way. Fill it up with some dirt. Sometimes I use gloves, sometimes I don't. It's just all about getting it in there. All right. And I fill it and I pat it down. Just make sure because when you want it, you don't want the dirt to overflow the lid. So I think that is good enough. So I'm just going to see how much dirt is in the container. <laughs> 